Um, we were just, uh, Jeff and I were just talking, Dr. Feimer and I were just talking. We've known each other for how long? Probably 20 mm -hmm. years. It's got to yeah. be close to this point. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And um, and I'm super excited about this because even though it's an ask me anything, it's not going to be an ask me anything today other than I will hmm. I'll, I will definitely weigh in on on stuff. But um, I'm really excited to find out what you're doing. I only know a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, but I'm hoping that um, you can just sort of start from scratch and um, uh, let us know let us know what it's all about and sort of maybe why you started it or how it's come about and um uh i just i just wanted to say something fast too as i as i know dr jeff from from the uh american homeopathic veterinary medical wheelhouse and realm and he's been doing veterinary homeopathy for a real how long um, 25 years 25 years, years yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, it's it's uh, we're sort of in the same. We all started around the same time, I think, you know. So, but I'm not going to take up much more time because I want to sit back and just totally listen to what this is all about and how it can be another tool because we can never have enough of those. That's for sure. Yep, and I agree, and that's that's exactly why Beam came to be. Okay, so you could tell us about it. Sure. Um, the focus of Beam really is just that. Actually, it's allowing us to focus, like we're using a flashlight beam to sh shine the way along a dark uh, path. It's a road map. It's it's an illumination along the road map uh, for our pets, and the road map ends with nature. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and it is guiding, guiding the way to allow your pet's bodies to heal themselves the way nature intends. Wow. And it gives us tools, you know, a lot of signposts along the way. It shines, shines light on a lot of signposts about you know, what you should do about various situations. And the reason why we'll talk about in, I guess, a few minutes. Okay. Unless... Well, no. So, so, um, and this is something that all pet parents can do with their, with their animals. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. That, that is the intention. And actually you've got, you know, the two sides of the coin, all the, the conventional internal medical diagnostic blood tests and x-rays and which are invaluable when you're at the vet but what about when you're home you know all day every day day in day out and you can be monitoring beam and we ask everyone to, to track what's called the beam score oh, so where wow. where okay. is your pet on the beam scale where you know one is the depressed, not eating, you know, not functioning well pet. And a 10 is a vital, happy, you know, rambunctious 12 year old, a great Dane that's running around, you know, being like a puppy, which is what yeah. we want, which is where that roadmap is guiding us. Right. Which, that's so yeah. important. We sometimes we just assume that they're you know they're geriatric when you know what is it now like seven it's crazy it's just crazy it just blows my mind and we're just like oh well yeah she's old or oh well yeah he's old and we just sort of you know um subscribe to the to the the what's normal out there which really isn't normal and that that's a foundation actually of the beam is the common versus normal and what's common is not normal a lot of the times an itchy dog and oh he's a golden retriever with ear problems and hot spots that's normal no it's not normal it's very very common okay so yeah, yeah. and and i'm so glad you brought up age because 
that is a huge limiting belief. And that's why nature is really our goal, you know, the roadmap towards nature. And by nature, I mean for animals and age, what age they really should be living to. Yeah. What is their genetic age if we don't get in the way of healing? And I think the odds are that we're going to find out that the age that pets were living in the 40s and 50s before we started intervening, you know, Goldens living to 18, 20 routinely, or Great Danes living to 17, 18 routinely. It's not going to be that unusual. And in fact, there are groups of animals that are kept super happy by following their beam. They're living until their late teen, uh, Great Danes living till the 16, 17 today. Yeah. It's so fascinating. Well, I mean, I, it, and are you going to just tell us what this is or like explain? Oh, this to us? definitely. I mean, okay. that, that is a huge part of, of a bunch of our goal is for everyone in the world to you know, at least know about the beam, which helps inform all of the other, you know, uh, conventional information. The beam is basically that intuitive sense of how your animals are doing and no one knows better than you. I mean, think about all the times that beam is off that you know something is off and you go to the vet and they just can't find anything. Or the blood works normal and it's like, well, it might be normal, but there's clearly something wrong with, with this animal. Or I, I, into, I don't know how many times people would come to me at my clinic and say, everything they're saying that there's nothing wrong with him or her and it i i just in, i feel that there's something wrong so how do you teach people that how do you how do you do that well beam is an acronym for the four things that you watch that you can actually measure and know day by day you know a beam square went from nine to seven or from seven to ten or yeah. Um, behavior. So does your dog, you know, get up and greet you? Does he want to interact with you? Does he want to be off by himself? Um, does your kitty do his normal routine of, you know, patrolling, uh, patrolling the area? Um, behavior is a bit subjective in that it's hard to, you know, measure unless you actually know you know, what, what your animal does under ordinary circumstances. Energy is perhaps the foundation of everything we teach because having high enough energy is what allows beam to be its best. Okay. And, and energy we can measure through, you know, things like how far do they walk, how long do they walk, how often do they play, do they... I can get up and greet you every time. Um, and then the most measurable is A, which is the appetite. Ah, okay. And, and that, that's often how you know, we know things are going on. I'm thinking about Sue and her pup who stopped doing the, you know, she was a golden and she stopped with her um, hurry up noises. You know, when you get in the food ready and a dog is barking, well, that's what she did all the time, but that went away. And actually, that was an early warning sign that the dog was going into Lyme kidney disease. And actually went into severe Lyme kidney disease. But by following Beam, by not worrying about the yeah, the diagnosis. Um, her pup lived another four years with severe Lyme kidney disease. Wow. wow. And and so you this is um this is a, a program that you teach people. Is that is that what you do? You do you have like a like a like a teaching program for this? Is that correct? We we do actually that is uh, what we do at Holistic Actions, which, you know, the basis of it is the free course that we call the Vitality and Balance 
system, which basically is raising vitality and making, you know, or helping the balance be as best as it can be. And the Pet Health 101 course is just teaching the basis of beam, of vitality, of fresh food feeding, all things that you can do along the road to better health. And um, once you you learn this um, uh, this method of of scoring your animals, then then what like with that dog that had the long kidney, what what did you do to help the healing? Well, I guess the answer is everything that would allow the body to heal. Do its job, yeah. So you know, uh, PEMF devices, fresh food feeding, rub feeding, homeopathy, um, you know, massage, and a big one that's we're getting more and more information about nowadays in people he is the healing intention of our loving intention. Mm-hmm. The, uh, visualizing, you know, the the healing in the body at the cellular level. Yeah. And and I heard a quote yesterday uh, that what we're going for is cellular joy. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. That it, well, wow. It's very that is very true. And I mean, I know with um with you know you've been i don't know how long you've been a veterinarian but um you know i'm sure my cat is in front of everything and I, she's gonna drop something off okay come here um so you you're really seeing the the uh, would you say that even folk even being able to focus on paying attention to what's normal and what's common or what's common and what's not common wouldn't that bring you closer to your animal like wouldn't that even that connection wouldn't that strengthen that that joy and that connection because of um just stopping and learning how to pay attention in a way exactly and and it helps dispel any anxiety about what to do and the more you're, oh, wow. you're in tuned with your animal, the you know the the better they're gonna do because there's that intention again. Your intention is not to have the common you know common symptoms, but you know for your animal to be normal and be like nature. And you know, we'll we'll talk further about you know the specific actions that we can do um, to follow the beam, but. Yeah, that that is that is exactly you know why not limiting your belief about age or a symptom or disease name or diagnosis name, why that can let you be closer or help you be closer to your animal, and that will help them heal. Dr. Feynman, can I can I squeeze in here really quick? Um, Someone in the chat's asking. Would you mind please repeating what the, the acronym stands for again We're, for us taking notes here? For, for sure. And that is behavior, energy, appetite, and mood. Oh, okay. And basically it's quality of life. Oh and yeah. That, that's, the, that's the focus of the beam of everything that we're going for is the happiest pets, the cellular joy, um, but that expresses on a whole pet level, you know, quality of life. Quality of life on one side, symptoms, diseases, and diagnoses on the other side. Mm-hmm. I have one more question, if you don't mind, Julie. When, yeah. when we're using this scorecard, uh, Dr. Feynman, how, what do we do? Are, are, do we keep a journal at the side of the table? Do we, I mean, like, I, I'm assuming it's a one to 10 thing. Give, give me an idea of how I can kind of get started at home. It is a one to 10 thing. And the, the easiest, 
can start doing is just like you said, can I can I give a plug to a book, a journal, or a, yes. it's a yep. Yeah. Um, Dr. Chambro has a healthy animals journal, which will describe. You know, it doesn't talk about beam because it predated beam, but it does. Like for example, gives you a little card here with the, the early warning signs of disease, you know, things like, you know, the little itchy pet or the cat that vomits that, you know, wasn't vomiting before. And by the way, that's an early warning sign and a, another common but abnormal symptom, and that is cats that vomit. Yeah, I agree totally with that. Everybody thinks that cats just vomit because they vomit, right? But they shouldn't be vomiting. I mean, I knew someone just said about hairballs and I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes cats do vomit hairballs, but if they're just vomiting, that's not, that's not normal. Well, that's not normal. It might be common, but it's not normal for sure. And what you said about um, quality of life, that's a huge one for me because especially with cancer dogs and cats, you know, or cancer animals and um, uh, you know, people coming and trying to make a choice of what they're going to do and what method of, of treatment they're going to follow. And, you know, um, you know, just, just I, time and time and time again, of people saying, oh, I'm taking him to the park and people don't believe that he's got cancer or that I'm uh, taking him to the park and people can't believe she's got whatever. And, you know, it's like, do we know how long that's going to be? But I feel like animals, it's not like they don't want to live a long time because I think they do, but they would rather live a quality of life than a prolonged one year longer that where they can't play and they can't eat and they can't, you know, and I think we can, achieve, when you were saying about nature and their ability to heal, I've seen amazing quality of life. Doesn't mean the cancer has gone away, but their ability to, their resilience and their ability to just be like there's absolutely nothing wrong with them is it's incredible it, it is and it's far beyond ours because of our limitation of our brains and worrying about the future worrying about our diagnosis and that worry is actually obstructing the flow of information in the body which, which they're learning in people yeah. that actually can create symptoms and that's what what's called the mind-body connection connection yeah for sure and now there are entire fields of medicine that are based on that actually there was a guy back in the 60s that wrote a book called anatomy of an illness mm. uh, anatomy of an illness as perceived oh, by the patient. Cousins. It's okay. yeah, Norman Cousins. Yeah. And the Norman Cousins Center at UCLA is now finding that the quality of life and happiness turns good genes on, bad genes off. Yeah, like Bruce Lipton, he says that. Yeah, you know, he was, he was a scientist with um uh, I think he was a DNA scientist and a professor, right, at the medical university and discovered that it has nothing to do with genes. Uh, but this is a long time ago, too, right? Like 20 years ago, he's been doing this. And that, you know, in a Petri dish, genes will completely change depending on their environment. And the more calm and beautiful and serene the environment is, they they change to adapt to that, right? Or they change to adapt to stress and, and all, you know, so many, so many things. I mean, it's, it, it just blows me away because it's so proven in so many different realms of, of human medicine. And we don't hear about it. We don't hear, you don't hear about it. I mean, what's coming, but you really don't hear about it. It's, it's, there in the human work, um, if you look, it's nowhere to be found in the vet work yet. Yeah. But yeah. it will be coming soon. Um, you know, like Morris Animal Foundation, their 2022 uh, research push is on 
quality of life of senior dogs. Well, I, yeah. Actually, we're about to get the research proposals to see what they want to study and holistic actions. Um, a very generous uh, member is funding a research study on the, the relation between beam and energy and quality of life for wow. things like brain disease or dilated cardiomyopathy or kidney disease. Yeah, so. that's amazing. It, it, um, I know that a few years ago, I was started saying, I guess, I don't know, Stephanie, how long it was, probably five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I used to say, you know, we're, we're so, there's so many people that subscribe to species oriented food, right? Like raw food diets and whatever that are species oriented, but nobody really looks at species oriented lifestyle. Like how does a dog really want to live? you know, or what, how should a dog really be living rather than being, you know, totally urbanized and totally, no one's paying attention to, you know, what, what they're doing with them or what their dogs are doing in a day, you know, 12 hours, a, you know, out of 24 hours, do they get attention for an hour, you know, out of 24 hours? And what would they be doing if they were out in nature, you know, out of that 24 hours, a lot of that time is spent doing stuff and being together, right? Yeah, and exactly. Julie, I hear you talking a lot about like um, the love connection that we have with our animals. If you could like build off of that, I know Dr. Feynman, you also mentioned it as part of the, you know, how to understand our animals. Yeah, well, for me, it's that oxytocin loop, right? Like the 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 actual. Um, being able to gaze into your dog's eyes or your cat's eyes or your horse's eyes or whatever, your pot belly pig's eyes, it doesn't really matter. And that they've proven now with dogs, you know, I guess it's 2012 in Japan, that, that they always thought it was just a human connection that humans could only do it and, and animals couldn't do it. But not only do animals do it, but you can do it with your animal, it happens with your animal. And that has huge benefits, oxytocin, cancer benefits, stress level benefits, hormone benefits, everything. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to do. Yeah. Just about like being so, mindful, right? I want to hear more about how people can learn this. Um, what do you teach them? How, like, how do we, how do they, how do people mm -hmm. find out more about this? And I have a question too. Is it self-paced? Well, um, there's three different uh, paths that people can take. The free course is one that's there all the time. And yes, it is. Everything is self-paced. Um, but then from the free course, we go all the way up to what's called the all access membership, which gives them the free course and a bunch of other courses as well as recordings of all the webinars that we do every week and the ability to jump on and ask questions on the webinar every week. In addition to a forum where they can ask the questions every day and to ask them every day. And a once a month a guidance call with one of the vets where we can help in 15 minutes or so to help them sort out what their next steps are. Whether they need to go to the vet or they should go to the vet oncologist or maybe just modify the diet or you know, what, what we would think. It's just um, the foundation is something called HMDM, which stands for Holistic Medical Decision-Making. Oh, wow, that's cool. HMDM, it stands for what? Holistic. Holistic, holistic medical decision making and we've got a report that you know anyone can download a print out and it it outlines all the specific actions things like the beam and a lot more awesome. i'll be happy to you know have if you guys want to i don't know if you distribute these 
afterwards, but if you want to include that, you can certainly include that. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I see a few um, of your group members are here with us on the chat, and they've been kind enough to drop the links here for us, for everyone that's, oh, that's here. The thanks. links are in the chat um, to the Holistic Actions website, as well as to the course. I was just checking it out here while you two were chatting. Um, is it okay here if we move into questions? Um, tonight, if possible, I'd like to direct them to Dr. Jeff. He's our guest. Um, so if you have questions about the BEAM method or holistic actions or how to connect with your animal in a better way, in a more efficient way, then by all means, um, put them in the chat. I'm keeping an eye on that or put them in the Q&A. That works too. And you know what, I've got one here from Melissa, perhaps I can start there. Sure. Her 12 year old Frenchie seems to have diarrhea more often than he doesn't. He gets fed freeze dried raw food, broccoli, carrots, blueberries, freeze dried chicken hearts. I give him the turkey tail as well. Jump for joints. That's from our adored beast um, line. The phytoplankton and potency. That's our omega oil. I give him organic pumpkin too to help with fiber every day. That seems to help, but I'm wondering if there's something missing. Um, do you have any insights? For sure. And I will ask the same question that I ask anyone to ask me about any specific symptom or what to do. And the first question is, how's the beam? What's, what's, what's your dog's beam score? So if it's high and it's always been high or now it's you know as normal as always with the diarrhea or without, then the odds are that like the questioner is asking to something that you can modify in the, in the lifestyle um, that, that will help. Um, and a big, big thing of that is rotating through, I, yeah, four different probiotics, is that right, Chili? Yes, yeah, actually yeah. five, I think. Cool, yeah, mm -hmm. just, you know, just replace those great microbes in the gut with, you know, uh, rotational probiotics and the best and easiest way is just rotate through the ones that you can get um, from a door beast. And you can add in fermented foods, letting your dog, you know, uh, eat soil and get soil-based probiotics that way. But um, how I, to, to, I think it was a twelve-year-old dog. So. Did you say twelve, Steph? Yes, I believe so. I'm just pulling it up again here. Okay. Yeah, twelve-year-old Frenchie diarrhea more often than he doesn't. So when, yeah. when, when you say about is what hap I have a question. What happens like with this dog with with the diarrhea? What happens if your um, so if the behavior is normal but the energy's off? Let's say your beams. Do you, do you take a an overall score or do you look yes. at your okay so? It doesn't matter if like their their behavior is normal, but their energy is really low. Their appetite's kind of in the middle, and then their mood is sort of up there too. But so the only th real thing would be like their energy is low. How how do you what do you how do you do that? Like how what what happens there? Also, awesome question, and you know I'll apply it to the twelve year old Frenchie. And the very first thing you do is go to the vet. Get an exam, get diagnostic tests. Hopefully everything will be normal. And at that point, there are lifestyle things, not necessarily supplements that you can add, but things you can tweak in your dog's lifestyle to try and help the balance. Because mm -hmm. you know, we can also think of beam as the balance beam. You know, uh, we're trying to balance between health and disease. We spell disease with a hyphen because mm -hmm. we want to be in the state of ease, but yeah. sometimes, you know, we're just, we're off balance. Yeah. 
And, and can we still do this with animals that are, I guess, and obviously the beam is, um, it's good for puppies and kittens and young dogs so that you, we have a baseline even, right? Which is incredible. Like we, you know, as clinicians and stuff, we, we always recommend to have baseline blood work so that we know what's, what's, you know, what are they, what are they like in a healthy state and what are they like when they're as, as they're getting older or when they're sick. Um, but I'm sure you can come anywhere from, um, uh, a beam down a, a youngster. And what happens if you, you can still use that with any pathology, right? So if a dog has Cushing's or a dog has, um, cancer or whatever, or something, they're quite sick or, or severe, really severe allergies. Um, is that one of the first things that you recommend is to start noticing this, the, the beam, like start noticing and, and um, documenting it? it? It is. And if you can do it as a baseline, you know, know what your animal's normal beam is and what their normal so, uh, behavior and diet and everything is, then you can certainly determine you know, what's, what is changed in them. Mm -hmm. And the reason I recommended the test and um, an exam for a 12 year old dog is HMDM, Holistic Medical Decision Making, which is based on the context, the full context. So if you have a Cushing, a dog with Cushing's with, you know, a diarrhea that comes and goes, um, that will be a little bit of a different context than a young dog who had diarrhea off and on. Yeah. And especially if they've had, you know, drugs or other things for diarrhea in the past. Mm -hmm. And can you, so if somebody does this, does your course and, and they're following your, um, your podcasts and your your webinars and stuff do they are they then um supported with this holistic medical uh like the like do you do you guys help net them navigate what they should try and do and which way they what they should try and find and things like that right we 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 do and again that's um done in three different levels there's the total you know, do it yourself where you, know, you read the or go through the course. Yeah. Um, then there's the intermediate where they get the weekly webinars, all of the books and, you know, all the all the resources um, yeah. as long as, but they don't, there's no one-on-one. -on -one. Then there's the all access, which is that one-on-one -on -one forum and live webinars and the monthly calls where we'll give that that kind of one-on-one -on -one guidance oh wow that's amazing and um what happens if someone's working with a with a conventional vet obviously you can't be taking blood work and doing things like that through this um do liaison not liaison with the vet but you know help people i do this thing called vet ready so that, you know, trying to work with your veterinarian, do you give them some guidance then to go to their vets and say, say certain things to their vets and things like that? Very much so, Julie, because <laughs> that is, that is actually the bigger picture goal is right now we are working hand in hand with a bunch of vets around the, around the world. But it would be great because there are a lot of vets that are not, you know, holistically trained. But they're open-minded. Yes, for sure. And that is, you know, to work like that is by far the best, I think. You know, as far yeah. as working with your vet who can do their diagnostics and their exams and make the recommendations that if you're not sure what to do, we don't make any diagnosis or recommend any treatment. Just, you know, point out that, well, this is going to be building energy and this is going to be you know, um, expending energy. And um, when, so let's say, let's say it, the energy is low. We'll just use energy again. Um, and the, 
Is, do you ever see something where their energy becomes better, but then then maybe their appetite drops a little bit for a while, or their mood changes, or do you expect with the beam that all of the all of the components start to raise at the same time? What what do they are they do they come do they go up and down as the dog or cat or horse or whatever is healing? That that's a great question, and actually bring up a really important point that yes they do to answer that question and but what's more important are the trends so you may have day-to-day -day variation and expect day-to-day -day or hour by hour variation in each parameter but is today better than last week under the same circumstances you know there's some pets that when it's hot and humid out their beam goes way down, but was it hot and humid last week when their beam was this low? And if the answer right. is no, then yeah, then there may be something something going on. on. Right, for sure. And how about um is there a um uh is there a, a a case you could tell us where something that we could everybody that's watching could get their sort of an example of a of a beam case I, <laughs> probably a thousand but I yeah a lot yeah yes. and it just so happens this morning i did a recheck of isabel and she's a great example because roseanne um learned how to use the beam right away and you know, to follow the roadmap and what to expect as far as healing, you know, as far as look outside the window and, you know, nature is going to guide you in that direction. But in the middle of the treatment, in this case for kidney failure, um, but during the treatment, the dog's beam was getting better and better and better and actually is now 100%. But last week, there was large volumes of vaginal discharge, sticky white vaginal discharge, like whenever the dog lied down, she would, and she said, instead of freaking out and rushing to the ER, which was actually her intent initially, she looked at, at Isabel, Isabel went to sleep and was totally fine after she did that, but it was a couple of days later. And it was just her body doing its job. Peen was high. There was a symptom. So Roseanne knew to just wait and watch. Right. So it's very homeopathic that way, right? Is it an aggravation or is it a, yeah, like what, what's, what's happening with the body? So, so you would say in that situation, because she understood the beam, she was able to stay present enough and understand whether it was going to be an emergency situation where she needed to run into the vets, right? So she was able to, to assess her own dog, per se, um, work through this situation or whether she needed to take her to emerge. Exactly. And the converse is also true that even if there are no symptoms, if the beam really drops, you might want to go to that like right away. Yeah, I think uh, that is what you just said right now um, uh, is, I think, vital because people people only looked at, at symptoms like vomiting or diarrhea or something that 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 is, you know, clearly visual and energetically. I mean, that was probably one of the number one things I would say when I would be called in the middle of the night at from at my clinic i'd be like how's his energy you know well he's going up but his energy's great like he's eating fine and he, this is fine and it's normal it's like okay well let's just wait you know if all of a sudden he gets massively worse and his energy drops and can't lift his head up and doesn't wag his tail when he sees you i mean that's that's the again i think that that's when we look at any kind of energy healing whether it's homeopathy or acupuncture or just you know, even Reiki, if the vital force or that vitality starts to slip, it's it's kind of like an it, it it's showing you that they're losing their vital force on all levels, not just their stomach or not just their 
kidneys or not just their GI or, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big deal energy. It's a really big deal. And it is the basis of life. And, you know, as far as you know, high energy in kids or puppies or kittens or zero energy when they're not alive anymore. And that is, it's interesting you said that because it was a mitochondrial energy article that started with the quote from Hahnemann about the vital force and about how when the body has energy, it's alive. When it doesn't, it's not alive. So we want to build and preserve that energy in any way that we can. Julie, yeah. um, yes. can you share your your airplane just to build off of that? It's perfect to what you were saying about, Dr. Feynman was saying about the energetic, you know, as, as they age, the energy goes down. And there's always this, I can't think of the word, what story you tell about an animal's life. And it's like yeah. an airplane ride. Yeah, it's the person that first talked discussed that with me was actually um, Sue Armstrong, Dr. Sue Armstrong. And she always would say that her goal with, with treating an animal or, or taking an animal from whatever age that she started taking them at the clinic, um, her goal was to have like a takeoff and then, you know, your midlife is just, you know, there's a couple bumps, but you recover quickly and, and you're, you know, you're going along and then all of a sudden you have a fairly fast decline and it's done compared to like up and then down and then up and then down and then turbulence that you drop almost the whole way and then a crash landing and, you know, you just, you want to, you know, get on the plane and, and have a, you know, have a martini and, <laughs> but, you know, just be, you know, just floating along and have a few bumps, but that you recover quickly, you know? And that resilience is what we're building and that, that immune resilience at its core is having high beam. When you have a high beam, you can be resilient. I mean, you've got two dogs going into a kennel and they both get exposed to kennel cough. One gets sick and one doesn't. And the difference is the immune resilience of the, of the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. And I think naturally dogs have that. I think we have it too, but I think it's been so, um, like you said, our biggest problem is our brain and our, in our ability to talk ourselves out of things or talk ourselves into things that don't really exist. And, um, you know, I find that in like with our, with our species oriented probiotics, uh, because it's made from dog feces, it's a, it's a canine species when we did our study, it just made so much sense. Like when you looked at their, it, the ability for this probiotic to be like almost like a, a natural immune modulator, right? Like it's, it, it, it's like, oh my gosh, like we were seeing things out of, you know, like the, these particular species. And the big one was its ability to suppress or, um, um, stop the, um, uh, the, the growth of, uh, salmonella, E. coli and, um, uh, clostridium. And it's like, well, of course it does because they're meant to eat this stuff. Of course, that species of probiotic that comes from a canine would do that. And so it's just, we're so, we're so, the body is so perfectly built to be resilient and know what to do and have the have its wisdom but we we are you know notorious to fear monger right to 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 scare the daylights out of us about our animals to scare the daylights out of us about our own bodies it's 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 so that in itself is so disease stimulating never mind viruses and and bacterias or pathogens. And that that is the essence of the model. And I'm, I'm just thinking that what you described is medicine and veterinary medicine as it is right now, as far as focusing on disease, 
And the, the, the definition of wellness and health is absence of disease. When we say the definition of health is having the freedom and flexibility to do whatever you want to do. And by that, I mean, be like nature and, and it's easy. I mean, we're so wise and it, because the, the body is wise as far as healing and animals have that innate wisdom we just get in the way we do get in the way i think we get away you know people are always surprised when i talk about um you know i i, I mean I own a supplement company and i i feel like you know what we're doing with our with the this mushroom project that i'm doing is is looking at the 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 counts of medicinal value with mushrooms that are that are growing in forests, right? They're growing in the wisdom and the bacteria in the ground, and they're growing in, you know, around you know deer feces and bugs and and um, air the the air. But I also feel like it's the communication between the the fungi and the trees and the fungi and the plants and the fungi and whatever they're eating. And I've been, you know, I've subscribed to that for a very, very long time, probably 20 years. And I, and I, I feel like we, you know, but yet we're purchasing herbs and purchasing mushrooms and purchasing all of these, these ingredients that are removed from their own, from their own wisdom, right? I, I feel like we, we know nothing about anything like people, <laughs> I feel like we really need to pay attention to nature. And if we, instead of trying to put nature into our box, we need to ask nature if we can play in their sandbox and, and look and learn, you know, because, you know, our, our, our idea that we know everything is just so, um, such a shallow, shallow way of thinking and, and, and being. So, and beaming. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because beaming and breathing together are the actions that are the base of what we can do to help our pet have the highest beam and heal as possible. The higher the quality of life, they can physiologically heal, but they're going to do so on the timeline of nature, not our timeline. So symptoms are not meant to come and go within a, a couple hours of a pill. They may go away gradually. You know, I've been diagnosed with my own genetic disease and I've had symptoms every day for 46 years. And I can say 100% that my body is a symptom factory. That is the job of my body. And it's up to me. And the hardest thing in the world is stand back and watch it. When I had Lyme and I had 105 fever, my wife was saying, don't you want to go to the hospital now? Don't you want to go to the hospital now? And I said, no, no, we'll just don't treat it along with the roadmap. And by the next day, I was pretty much back to normal because my body did its job. Okay. And your pet animal bodies will do their job. That, yeah. that, that leads me to a question. Um, you say you have this killer fever and it's just like, what tools can you give to us to overcome the fear and the panic that comes along with these things happening? How do we cool down and cope with sometimes these things come on quick and gosh, is it ever scary? Well, I have to agree at a core with Robin that the fastest way to deal with that is homeopathy. And what is homeopathy doing? It's giving your body a roadmap. It's giving it a template of for healing. It just speeds up the healing process. Well, the, the way I healed so quickly was homeopathy. And actually, my symptoms were clues that my body was giving my homeopath to figure out what to do, what remedy to give. And again, by the next day after the curative remedy, you know, things were back to back to balance. 
And did you say it was with a Lyme fever? That 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 one because fevers yeah. are yeah I, I don't usually have them that high but that was that was associated with the uh, Lyme like mm -hmm. a confirmed case like a deer tick I saw the deer tick and I saw the rash and I said well let's wait and watch and see what the, my body does well <laughs> it did it <laughs> it did it it sure did oh my yep. goodness yeah yes it's uh, and and do you feel like um I, I mean I think I honestly you know it I I did a lecture in Chicago a few years ago and um a cancer lecture and I, I know that um a, a large part of what I was talking mm -hmm. about was you know with cancer we hear the word and it's like from ground zero you know the patients that I've worked with or clients I've worked with patients, it's like, it's a, such a main focus of their, of their, uh, they're consumed by their, the word. Right. And for we, the whole, we action, are, we, but yeah, we are, that's the whole thing. And that's what I was trying to, to teach them in this lecture. Like there, you know, it was a homeopathic lecture about, you know, working with cancer patients and stuff, but, um, I would always say, you know, to my, to my, my clients, it's, it's a word, right? It, it's, ju it's just, I know it's scary. And I know that sounds flippant with, you know, with lots of people that die from cancer, but it, it is a word. And if we can try and just look at it as something's gone wrong, instead of using the word cancer, something's really gone wrong. And how do we get that wrong righted? Right, because I think when we use those words, we scare ourselves into into getting worse, right? Getting worse and not being. Able. And then my dog, and people used to say to me, "You're so calm, and you make so much sense, and you help us so much." And I don't know what we would do without you. And then my dog got it, and it was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> now I need to like seriously practice what I preach and it was really hard right it was really really hard to you know how you were saying like with your symptoms throughout your life you almost have to step out of it right like you have to step back and observe it rather than being enmeshed all enmeshed in it exactly and that's why we use the roadmap uh, metaphor because if you know where you're going you don't worry as much about the signs along the way. And if you look at those signs, it's clues about which way to turn and what to do. Um, it, it takes away a lot of that, that fear and anxiety. And I just, I see we're running out of time, but I just wanna give one quick plug to One Health Medicine. One Health, one, one health Medicine, otherwise abbreviated OHM, O-H-M is the universal medicine that we know unites pets people and the planet and it always in all those species if you're alive there's only one thing you need to know to follow that roadmap and that is raise energy or in physics we say conserve energy you know, there's a physical law of the conservation of energy. Well, that's what you do in the body as well. And we can, and our pets, are they have the tools to do that. We just have to kind of use beam and other signs that, to follow that roadmap instead of getting upset with the word or a challenge from a, a diagnosis or disease and uh, Ohm is to attain ohm, we need to be, it's helpful to be in the regrowth mindset. Mm. So there are fixed mindsets where we're fixed by symptoms, diseases, diagnoses, age belief. And then there's a regrowth mindset, which is spring. I mean, you look outside in spring, everything is dead. And then a week later, it's all regrown. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get you to do more stuff because I think this is really vital. 
Like, I mean, I think it's, I think it's, it's vitally important to, um, to, I, I, I believe, and we can go over a little bit, so don't worry, but I believe, if you can, if I believe, I believe that our animals are, are such gifts to us. Like I, I feel like they teach us for me anyways, they teach us so much and I know what they've done for, you know, the, the thousands of clients that I've seen with their animals, it, their animals change the way they think, right? If, if you let them change your way, the way you think, and then it just becomes this like synergistic process, right? So you, you know, people will come in and they ignore their own health or their own stress. But if I say to them, you guys have to go and see someone to deal with your stress. If you really want to get your animals better, right? Because your animals are picking up on your stress. They're here to teach you something. Then it's such a synergistic process, right? Like they heal together, which is, which is, which is incredible, phenomenal. But I've never been able to give someone the tools to do that other than talking to them and trying to teach them, you know, everything sort of that we're talking about one-on-one. So I'm like, I am so excited about this because when I do, (laughs) well, I uh, seriously, because when I do my own ask me anything and I do, you know, there's, I, I help, I try and help people, but there's so much help that people need from this perspective that takes a course takes the understanding, takes the education, and then takes the practice. you got to practice. I mean, I would think you've got to practice it. So I, I can't wait to share that with more and more people because we, we are, we're really, we're really missing that with, with our animals. Like we can go and we can meditate, right? But people are really, they're really f- like floundering with, with knowing what to do with their animals. They really do. Cause we, as veterinarians in the veterinary industry, the it's made out to be, you don't know your animals, only vets know their animals, your animals, because animals can't communicate. Well, animals can completely communicate and you can learn how to communicate with them and understand them. Right. To, to like, like you said, with, you know, you, you have, you can get so many more tools and actually, we have an article on how to talk to your animals via their symptoms. And truly, that's, that's exactly what, you know, that I would be honored to have, you know, any, be able to help in any way. And like you said, yeah, in a lot of these challenging situations, it's hard to, to you know, convey what you just said. And I guess there's kind of a, a really what seems trite, but it's actually founded in molecular biology and old medicine, and that is go with the flow. You know, it's like a smooth flowing river, the Colorado River carved the Grand Canyon by staying smooth and flowing for years, by persisting and persevering and having patience. <laughs> You know, over the over the course of in this case, millennial, you know, a long, long time. But you know, I think that that if we can all go with the flow, which means removing all that negativity and fear and hatred and you know, anything that gets in the way of the healing process, that that that's going to be your answer to, or that can be your answer to what what can I do now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Stephanie, I'm going to get Stephanie to like, once we're finished here, I really want to, um, um, you know, connect again, because it's been so long since I've seen you, but connect again, and see what we can do. Because I honestly do, I believe that in with all my heart that, you know, we can, we can feed the best food, we can, I've said that so many times, eh, Steph, like, mm-hmm. we can feed the best food, we can, give the best supplements but we need there's another piece that's missing and that's the and that's the connection and the understanding of like you were just saying with that dog with the with the vaginitis or the vaginal discharge 
if that dog had gone, I'm not saying that, you know, you never go to a vet or you never go to emerging. That's not what I'm saying, not even remotely. But if, if that dog had gone, chances are, you know, maybe they thought it, you know, got, you know, put on antibiotics and done, you know, a whole bunch of things that then cause secondary problems, right? Like, you know, they, they destroy their gut microbiome and the, you know, their immune system gets trashed and, you know, so, so I think it's, I think it's a, I think it's a large part of your toolbox with, you know, good food and exercise and proper supplementation and things like that. I think it's a large, large part. It's the one missing piece, which a beam and what you just described replaces is what I put in the chat, which is how you can talk to your pet through their their symptoms and beam is basically a biomarker just like blood test is a biomarker of what's going on in the body great awesome. well you can write an article for us and we'll put it on our on our on our website and get everybody that's following adored beast to start it, it because it is right it's it's just it's a collaboration of everybody and and putting together everybody's experience and and expertise and to to it's a holistic approach right it's everything and this is this is really this is a really vital important piece of navigating your animal's health and, and well-being i'm so excited i want to learn yeah <laughs> thank you for joining us dr jeff and um for everyone on the call dr jeff just popped a link there in the chat yeah. Um, copy and paste that to your to your notepad so you have it. Um, and and I would be really nice to collaborate on something again. And yeah. perhaps I can follow up with you in an email for some more of the resources that were shared tonight, and we can share them with our community as well. That'd be awesome. We could uh, share things like love therapy and the yes. happiness protocol, and yeah, all of things. That. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. As Julie always says, we're stronger together. So thank you for joining us again, Dr. Jeff and Julie. Thank you as well. And thank you all of the attendees for hanging out. It, it was a fabulous session. It was really nice to see you, Jeff. Julie was great. And thank you for inviting me. And Steph, thank you so much for moderating. You're welcome. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Thank you. I'll talk soon again. Okay. Thanks, Julie.